Good morning, YouTube. It's been a minute since I made a video. I've been a bit busy lately. Gen 9 also came out. I'm also working on IRL stuff, so it's been a minute since I made a video, it feels like. But today I want to take the time to make a video to talk about the new patch, because the patch notes for version 2.0.0 of Splatoon 3 just dropped, and the patch is about to drop two days from this video. Not even, honestly. So I basically wanted to go over that, talk about it, my thoughts, impressions, expectations, that sort of thing. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than last time. I'm gonna have the notes on screen, but I'm not gonna, you know, verbally go over every single note because last time I did that, I felt kind of out of breath already. By the time I, you know, said everything, because there's so many like little changes in patches like these. Like if I go down here, like there's a lot to talk about. I'm gonna try to keep it, you know, like casual, all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you're new here, I'm a competitive player, so this is from my POV. Uh, as someone who's like, you know, won Nintendo tournaments, all that kind of stuff. So bear with me. We'll talk about it. We'll get into it. Uh, so 2.0, there's going to be like a bigger patch, you know, it's like our big like season patch, you know, it talks about what there's going to be, new items in the store, catalog, 10 weapons, uh, main weapons with, you know, different kits like, you know, Zinc Mini. And we have three new main weapons, and we actually, at the time I'm recording this, we only know bits and pieces of those kits. Like we know the new charger has Cooler, and I think we know that the shooter has Whale. Uh, I don't think we know anything about the roller at this point. Uh, so, you know, it says two new maps, the Marooner's Bay from Salmon Run and Splatoon 2, new weapons. They're adding tabletop cards for the new weapon kit variants. I think that's cute. I hope they keep doing that because I like that a lot. Uh, and then talk about the, you know, new catalog that comes with every season. In terms of main weapon buffs, honestly, there's a lot less than I thought there would be. All that they did was adjust Tri-Stringer and Wiper, which are, you know, the two main weapon classes that were added in Splatoon 3. And for them, with Tri-Stringer, it says that it basically increased the paint, uh, and specifically with like the long-range paint. So that's kind of neat, honestly. I think Bow was kind of an awkward state of painting where the truck was aim up, but even then, the, the most effective way to paint is, you know, only short-range paint. Uh, so getting a buff on that in long-range is actually kind of cool. I like that. That's a nice quality of life for it. Then my uh Wiper, what they did is, because of the way Wiper, you know, you do the vertical flick, it's a very clean line. Horizontal, not so much, you have to swing, you know, numerous times to even attempt to get a clean line, so basically they're making the width of the horizontal slashes a bit more so, more, more paint output, that's cool. Uh, could be neat in the future when you get a second Wiper kit, because I don't think the Wiper kit as of right now is really doing a ton, but we'll see. The only sub weapon to get adjustments this patch is Angle Shooter, and they made the initial velocity 20% faster and flight range has been extended, basically it goes further range and it does it faster, which is kind of crazy to me because it already feels super fast, but it is an underwhelming kind of gimmick sub. Uh, the big thing of note is I kind of wanted the damage buffed, especially with Slosher Deco coming into the game with Angle Shooter, can combo off of it, but we didn't get that, so yeah. It could be better, I, I doubt we'll see much play of this, but you know, maybe it'll make Slosher Deco interesting. And on the note of Slosher Deco, this one's big, uh, and going over special weapons with Zipcaster. A lot of the complaints with Zipcaster from players has been the duration is too short, so the devs have addressed that by making it so when you use a main weapon, it lasts a lot longer. Like 67% is a sizable increase. I can't give you like the exact amount of time until we really play it in two days, but that's kind of crazy. So this alone, you know, Zipcaster will still be inconsistent. You don't have like consistent armor. You'll probably zip on your screen and then die behind the opponent's screen. Stuff like that will still happen, which kind of sucks. But it lasts longer, so it gives you more time to make plays and distract and all that sort of thing. But I think this is really interesting, especially for Octobrush. I think Octobrush is the best Zipcaster up in the game like easily right now, so pretty cool for it. I like that. Uh, Inkback got one thing addressed that I complained about a while ago where I said the damage was really low. They basically just slapped 100 more damage onto it, and they said this change is intended to increase damage done to objects, right, make your shield, all that sort of stuff. That's fine. Personally, I'm still kind of not an Inkback believer. I think it's a very niche, awkward special. This doesn't really do anything to alleviate that, but I mean, hey, the reward is a little bit better if you get the shot off, so that's nice. They get damage buffs. Reslider got one as well. Uh, if you haven't seen the clips around on Twitter, basically, uh, with the new, like, parry mechanic, you could essentially parry the lethal hit of Reslider and then proceed to punish the person and kill them, so they said, hey, no, and they increased the damage to the point where you can't do that anymore, because it says it right here. This change is intended to increase damage, obviously, and to allow players to defeat opponents' armor due to squid roll squid surge, yeah, because if you're good with that, it was basically a free kill, so that's nice. Good quality of life for Reslider. That's big for Tetra particularly. 
And then this is my favorite change of the patch, like Barn Hunt. Like I, I love this. I've been complaining about this for years. At the missiles, this is the only like special nerf. After launch is confirmed, the special gauge will now slowly decrease, and the special gauge will not be able to begin charging in until the gauge has been completely drained from previous use. This is something I've clamored about for probably like three years on stream at this point, where I said by design missiles should not let you charge another set until the first set has landed. And this is essentially what that is, and I think that's excellent. That's awesome. I, I love this. This is a great quality of life. Like, easily my favorite patch note. That's great. I love that. Just even though there's not many missile weapons, I think that just makes the game more fun. Because having to fight missiles at... I meant to say Flingza that gets 13 missiles. I said missiles because it's all I see it on my screen. Uh, you, you get what I mean. If you've, if you've lived it, you, you know what I'm talking about. And then there are some special adjustments. A lot of the weaker options are just getting, you know, minus 10 as expected. I called Pro getting 190 from like week one of the game. Because it's flatter shot Pro. Uh, leader got plus 10, everything else is kind of just like a not really common weapon. I was just say. Only map adjustment that I see here under Toe Turf. I don't know why. That's very specific, but sure. You can get into the enemy spawn more easily. Well, I guess. And then they talk about some quality of life. Uh, bombs are louder, which is good, because... Uh, I, feel, I feel like if you played this game long enough, you know how like random bombs feel sometimes. Like you, you, you hear a bomb or you don't know where it is. Stuff like that that makes it easier. Uh, Trisuka's easier to hear and react to. We get bombs easier to hear. All that's good quality of life. Makes stuff more reactable. They talk about X battles, which is interesting. Uh, this bit about, you know, being like a, not a BO3, but you have to win three or lose three. And then you gain or lose X power. That's interesting. I'm curious how that'll play out. And you know, naturally, it's separated for each mode, as it was in Splatoon 2. The region thing, X model drop soon. Uh, they changed one thing in ranked, we're having like a, like an hour long ramble on stream about this at one point where I said, um, I wish people could reset their rank in ranked, because I always felt bad for people who are like S plus when they're like new to the game and like negative 4,000, because there's no way to like hit an undo button on that, so they added that, which is great. Uh, it says only B rank or higher, but that's fine. It was mainly referring to S plus when I talked about that on stream because I want people to feel encouraged to play the game. And I had this like whole spiel on it one day on stream where I'm just like, I, it feels bad because you're like S plus, which is really good for a beginner player, by the way. Like if you're an S plus, like congrats, that's awesome. Especially if you're a newer player. Uh, so you know, it always just sucked because like I always felt bad for people who post like I'm negative four thousand or whatever because it's just like you're kind of stuck in a in a limbo. So this this is nice. Uh, adjustments with that. Big Run's getting added. I think they, I think I saw on Twitter this morning that they're doing that like the 10th, 11th, or 12th or something. That'll be fun. I'm excited for that. Uh, job scenario mode, that's pretty cool. Uh, interesting. Sa salmon Run, uh, patch notes. They actually nerfed Big Shot, so you know. Big Shot memes slightly toned down, I suppose. That's cool, I guess. Uh, they made it well easier to use and more consistent with higher damage in Salmon Run. That's nice. It felt underwhelming. Uh, Tri Strike minor buff sticks to Salmon Nuts. That's big because that's really awkward for some bosses. Uh, jetpack we, uh, about not being targeted because a lot of the time you jetpack and then have like a million enemies on your landing. That doesn't happen anymore, so that's cool. Uh, capping bosses. This is technically a nerf to the difficulty of it. But I think it'll help the frame rate a lot. I don't know. We'll see how much that plays out. 15 is still like quite a few bosses, but yeah. When defeating bosses at a regular pace, even at high levels, players will not reach this limit. Okay, sure. Talk about track color a bit, but I'm not going to get too much into the details of that. New locker items. This one implies they took out the locker glitch, which is unfortunate. Uh, I saw something here about photo mode and recon, which is really cool. Badge, stuff like that. You know, bug fixes, a lot of bug fixes. Uh, one of the bug fixes that really stuck out to me that's related to Tana Missiles is it, it, um, let's say, uh, not that one, this one. Fix an issue where Tana Missiles passing within inches of terrain before impact would cause the impact predictor's position to be shown in a different position than the actual impact. I'm pretty sure this refers to the fact that sometimes you would just explode to a missile that had no marker on your screen. I think that's what that is for, and that's a nerf, but that's like a nerf in the sense of it was accidentally better than intended. Because I think we've all had those moments where we're, you know, sitting there, we see we're getting a missile, and we say, I'm going to walk that way. And 
there's already a missile over there and it makes no sense. I think this is what that is. So that that's just, that's awesome. That's great. Combined with the actual missile nerf. That's like one of my favorite things that I see in this patch as well. Uh, but yeah, I see a lot of people in terms of reaction to the patch talking about like, oh, where's the flash nerf, where's the crab nerf, all that. Even I talked on stream a lot about like, I think crab should be tuned down a bit. I still think it should be tuned down a little bit, to be honest. But uh, with the changes we have, I think my expectations for the coming month is like, Flash is definitely still like number one of the game, most likely. Machine's still gonna be everywhere. Splash will still be everywhere. I think of the new weapons that are getting added, um, T Tech could be used a lot. I think Custom Junior is interesting. I wanna play that one a lot. It's very interesting. I don't know how good it'll be, but it'll be very obnoxious. So I think that'll be fun. Um, and I think Carbon Deco, uh, especially, might have a really interesting spot because it's another like really strong burst bomb weapon to add to these kinds of comps with like Splash and Machine. Like you can do like Splash, Splash, Machine. Carbon, for example, that's like, that's a comp you could do, because uh, it adds fuel to the fire of burst bomb spam and like combos and all that. So it's really, really good. Especially on maps like Make Art that are still in this game, like Carbon's crazy there. So I'm interested in that. I expect to see that sort of thing. But yeah, honestly, I like this patch. It's kind of not too crazy, but I'm, um, I'm more on the boat where I'd rather see a bunch of small changes that I agree with than like seeing a bunch of changes that kind of like go out of their way to murder what's good because that was something that kind of happened in S2 like in S2 armor and jetpack needed to be addressed but they kind of murdered jetpack for a few months and that was like a little bit reactionary I suppose. Like I don't know Splash Research has really seen an uptick especially like in November. It might be the case that they had this patch in the works you know a bit before then. So you know maybe we'll get like a Splash nerf in like the spring but for, for now like I'm, I'm okay with this. This is all pretty good stuff. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm excited for the patch, because uh, I remember I was a little bit, like, skeptical going into this because I wanted to see the patch notes, and a lot of the kits they revealed on Twitter are kind of, like, eye-roll inducing, but uh, the kits they showed in the last few days, like T-Tech Carbon, Custom Junior, those are awesome. I, those are, like, so fun. Zinc Mini's cool, too. Uh, everything else I'm kind of, like, whatever on, but... Yeah, honestly, I'm okay with this patch. It's good. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you, do you like this patch? Do you feel like something's missing? Like, there you this. Yeah, let me know. Let me know what you thought. If you think you would have added something else, if you're excited for anything in particular, I'm mostly excited for the new weapons, like specifically before I listed. And yeah, thinking this has kind of been a reaction slash analysis video. Subscribe if you haven't. I would appreciate it. I know my videos are infrequent, but especially with the update, I'm going to try and update more frequently, post more. And yeah, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.